This is the virtual coaching session. It's part of a series that is intended to help graduates of the PMD Pro 1 course and those who've passed the examination to be assisted in making transfer of learning and application in their work. Today's topic is work breakdown structure and network diagram. I want to start with a bit of a review and answer this question. What are the five steps in schedule planning? Remember the five generic steps are number one, activity definition, two, activity sequencing, three, activity resource estimating, step four, duration estimating, and step five, schedule estimating. Now I think you might remember better what the project management tool that's used with each step. So take a minute or so and try to remember what tool is used with each of these generic steps. I'm sure many of you remember that the work breakdown structure or WBS is the foundational and first step. Once you have the WBS content then you can start to put together the sequencing through the network diagram. Uh, today I'm going to introduce the word PERT and PERT charts that are a form of network diagramming. The activity resource estimating, a common tool is a budget. Duration estimating is done through CPA, critical path analysis, and the Gantt chart is used for schedule development. Which phase of the PMD Pro 1 phase model, phase diagram, do we primarily use the WBS and the network diagram? This square represents the main place where we use the WBS and the network diagram. Of course, initially it's used in planning uh, but then it's revised throughout implementation through this iterative cycle, uh, the rolling wave planning process. I've also circled monitoring, evaluation, and control because the work breakdown structure is extremely useful in this function, and I'll talk about that a bit later. What do you remember besides what I've just told you from the PMD Pro 1 course about WBS and Network Diagram. The WBS is a list of all the activities within the scope of the project or within the scope of a specific work package if the project is too big to have just a single WBS. So all of the work that's necessary to produce the deliverables, both goods and services. The network diagram graphically represents the sequences, relationships and dependencies between the WBS's activities or the work package if you've broken it down even smaller. Can you remember the name of this graphic? The name is the triple constraint or sometimes called the project management triangle and it has of course the three components. First of all, cost, that all projects have a specific budget amount to work with. And if you reduce the project's cost, then you must reduce its scope 
or increase its time in order to compensate. Secondly, time or schedule. Some say that time is money. It easily slips away and every project has deadlines for delivery. So you could say that if you have to reduce time, then you must either increase cost or reduce scope. Third one then is scope, and that equates often to the outputs, if you're thinking in terms of the log frame. Many projects fail because the full scope of the project is not fully defined or understood at the start. And you could say if you increase the project's scope, then either increase its cost or extend its schedule. So that's just a review of what we talked about as a foundational concept in project management for development professionals. Now let's look at breaking down the scope and how much detail is needed. I'd like you to reflect on this statement and see if you can fill in the two missing words. Scope includes the processes required to ensure that a project plan includes blank the work required and blank the work required to complete the project successfully. That may have been a little bit difficult uh, out of context, but here's the answer. It's all and only. So I'll read the statement as it's complete. Scope includes the processes required to ensure that a project plan includes all the work required and only the work required to complete the project successfully. So people often ask the question, how much detail do I need? How much breaking down do we need of the scope in order to have the right amount for project management? And the answer is here, that you need to include all the work and only the work required to complete the project successfully. Again, this is a bit of a review, but I'd like you to think back to the PMD Pro 1 guide and to remember what is the difference between these two types of scope. Remember there's product scope and there's project scope. I'm sure you remembered that product scope is the what. That's the end result that the project will create, the products and services to be provided. And the project scope is the how, how you will get to the end result, the products and services, and the work that will be done to deliver the products and services. Both of those types of scope are extremely important. Now here's an extremely important concept and I'm going to ask you this question hoping that you have the answer. What does this mean? The work breakdown structure must be comprehensive and detailed. Comprehensive means complete, including all or nearly all of the elements or aspects. It includes both direct and indirect categories of the work, and I'll talk about that in a coming slide. So you basically want to make sure that you've got all of the categories covered. This is an engineering project and you'll see that they've got categories of hardware, software, systems engineering, project management, system testing, and data management. All of the direct and the indirect, all of the work. And then detailed means that it needs to be characterized by abundant use of detail or thoroughness of treatment. 
and it includes all of the work but not more than the work needed. You'll remember I stated that earlier and so then the detailed means that under each of those comprehensive categories you're providing all of the work that needs to be done but not more than the work and this is of course displaying the WBS in the graphical format. Back to that statement that I made earlier that the WBS must include both the direct and the indirect work. I'd like you to list at least two examples of direct work and two examples of indirect work. I'm hoping that you came up with a couple of these or your own examples that are different from these in each category. These are some that I brainstormed. Direct work is probably the one that is the easiest. Those are the things that we actually do to produce the products and services. So you are doing things like building, training partners, demonstrating techniques, advocating improvements, organizing communities facilitating and coaching, delivering vaccines, monitoring and evaluating, empowering and reporting. There could be many more. The indirect work examples are a little bit more difficult and it's not always easy to know for sure which category the work should go in. So you may see a few here that could arguably be in the direct work category, but it includes things like supervising support staff, planning and replanning, procuring and distributing, communicating, hiring and onboarding staff, launching and closing the project, assuring safety and security, providing and using technology, transporting and paying staff and vendors. We often forget to put that those categories in our list of comprehensive work to be done and we often then miss out on a lot of details as we are implementing.